we used to hear about selective listening, where people choose to hear what they want to hear. And mentally, they tune out someone's opinions or ideas when they don't line up with theirs. Now, it's a universal problem because as human beings, we all have our proud prejudices and biases. In a world of confusion especially, the Bible teaches us to be discerning and make good sense out of the things we hear. But today, we want to talk about another problem that goes alongside selective listening. That is selective information feeding. Now, most of the time, we know we are biased. But have we considered that those who feed us news are also biased? To a certain extent, the world is filled with different ideologies, agendas, motives, and biases. So how do we know that the news that we've read or the information that we've received from the media, from news fed, or from people we know are objectively credible? How do we know that they are not propagandists to influence our mind and direct our thinking? How do we know information fit to us are not a result of others' fear and uncertainty? Nowadays, we always hear people making money out of someone else's fear. For example, someone after hearing how bad the market is going to be, dump his investments prematurely, and then someone else make a fortune out of it. Or recently, when the media released news of COVID-19 vaccine being developed, the share prices of our national airline saw 14%. You see, the world reacts to both pessimistic and optimistic news, and sometimes blindly. And that tells us how much we need to scrutinize our information giver. Now, one thing with the COVID-19, if the world hasn't learned, is this. That is, don't believe everything you hear or read. Now, I'm not saying we totally discredit what science says or what the news media reported, but we must know everyone has their agendas when they release certain news. Whether it is on social medias or whether it's on national papers, sometimes they may do it in good faith, not knowing the complete picture. Sometimes they over-report, sometimes they under-report. So the one who hit every single advice given by the media will not survive. Why? Because the world is being deceived and it deceives also. And as Christians living before God, we have a godly responsibility to be truthful to our neighbors, to make careful considerations about the things we are telling others, right? For example, at the start of the coronavirus, there were some people who said we could reuse our disposable masks. And then there are some who are very against it. I happen to ask someone who are very against it, and later on, I realize that he is someone who is selling masks. And he releases information to tell people how unwise and dangerous it is to reuse those disposable masks. I mean, he could say he does it in good faith, but who knows? Now, the Bible teaches us to live as wise, not as unwise. And when the Bible talks about being wise or unwise, it's not just a matter of being smart. It is a matter of being morally responsible. And as Christians, we need to be responsible with what we are telling others. Now, I was reading a passage in Jeremiah where God told Jeremiah that one of the sins of his people is lying lips. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 8. Look what it says. Their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks with deceit. With his mouth, each speaks cordially to his neighbor, but in his heart, he sets a trap for him. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? Now, one of the sins that God punishes his people for was for their lying lips. And where does lying lips come from? It comes from a deceptive heart, a heart that is not right before God. Now, if we're not right before God, there is no way we can be truthful. We will be either saying things foolishly, without good discernment, or we will be saying things out of impure motives. So let's think through how we can be discerning and at the same time be responsible in relating information to others also. Number one, be a lover and seeker of God's truth. Now, there is only one absolute truth in this world. That is God's truth. So he who immense himself in God's truth will love what is right and pure. His heart will be less susceptible to lies and selfish motives. Now, dear brothers and sisters, don't think that you can outsmart the world with your wits and knowledge. There is no way your heart can be kept from lies and wrong motives when you are not spending time 
reading, listening, and confirming the truths of God. Number two, have a wide variety of news feed. Now, with the world being more fallen and polarized, learn not to read from just one news feed. Learn to read from different sources and read viewpoints that challenges each other. You need to have different point of views before you arrive at the right conclusion about things. And with regards to COVID-19, you can see how widespread the news are, the vaccines, the way of dealing with it. Now, if you could, my brethren, learn to read from different sources and learn to get first-hand information from people on the ground. Sometimes you only hear from medical workers, you will feel too negative as those working on the front line will be too overwhelmed to tell you negative things. Sometimes if you hear from people who are well sheltered, you will feel they are too cavalier about it. So my point is, have a wide variety of news feed. Don't believe everyone blindly. Number three, I would say, be reflective. Now, no one has a monopoly of objective information, but learn to observe each time after the world believe in a particular news, whether it is with regards to politics, economics, health, medical science, or the current pandemic, learn to see what happens on hindsight. In fact, there are some news network, politicians or economists who kept making the wrong prediction and analysis about things. But strangely, people keep believing them. You see, the most foolish thing is people don't learn from their mistakes and keep on letting themselves be influenced by views that are not credible just because those views play on their current fears and needs. Of course, no one can be right all the time, but we must learn to be reflective and do not be afraid to be confronted with the truth. Sometimes we need to be corrected to learn and we learn more from there. Now in a world of chaos and confusion, let us be more wise and discerning. Mm-hmm.